How's it going everybody? Welcome back to another video. So it's been super, super windy for the past week or two, as you guys can probably hear. And so it's been really difficult to find nice enough dive conditions to actually jump in the water. I've been trying as hard as I can to, you know, find a window where I can get in the water and get some fish. But um, tomorrow it looks like it's gonna be pretty nice in the uh, early morning. And so I'm gonna send it out on a dive with my friend Race. Haven't dove with him in a while. You know, since I came back, I haven't had the chance to dive with him. He's been super busy, but tomorrow he's off and he's got some free time. So we're going to send it out, hopefully get some nice fish and hopefully, <laughs> hopefully the weather's not too terrible so we can go in and get some nice, I don't even know what we're going to get. The spot we're going to has pretty much everything, but at random times. And so you're, there's always a chance to see something. But yeah, we're gonna go head out, hopefully get some nice fish, and I'll see you guys in the water. Shoots! Alright, here we go guys. So first drop here, I noticed a pair of kumus circling around these, this cluster of rocks here. So I started making my drop because one of them looked pretty big. And I'm going down and I can kind of see them going underneath this rock on my left and as i'm making my way down as i get closer to the bottom the big one comes out of that rock and comes in between those two and starts coming right at me now i didn't take a shot here because i figured he was super tame and very calm and so i wanted to get all the way down to the bottom to have a more stable shot and so i line up real nice and slow take my shot now with goatfish especially kumu and monokali Vekenono, not so much, but Kumu, Mwanakali, uh, Munus, all of those, they have really soft meat, and so they tear super easily. But usually they're pretty tame, so I like to be a lot more careful with my shot placement on goatfish especially. Maybe not so much Vekenono because they have more firm uh, firm meat, but Kumus and Mwanakalis and stuff like that, they tear really easily, so it's more important i feel like to get a good shot placement and luckily because this one was right in my face i was able to put that shot right in his gill plate and land this beautiful kumu to start off the dive maybe like a solid kumu maybe like a two two and a half pound or something like that super stoked to land this fish right in the beginning beautiful kumu So after I landed that kumu, I wasn't seeing too much else that I could shoot with the gun, so I busted out my three prong, started looking in the caves for menpachi and other red fish. And as you can see, I found a bunch of menpachi in here, being really skittish though, and a lot of them were not that big. As you can see, there's a big puhi paco right there. And I shot at a menpachi there, I can't remember if I hit it or missed, but as I reloaded, I saw an aveo veo, so I lined up on that and got him right there as you can see there was a small white tip on my left and then one coming at me behind that rock right there but yeah nice avail veil i haven't shot a good size avail veil in a very long time especially on oahu but i was able to find a nice one here and i love avail veil it's one of my favorite fried fish so i was pretty stoked on landing this one And after I shot that, I don't know if you guys saw, but on my way up, after I shot the Aveo Veo, there was an Omilu that came right up to me and Race goes down and sticks a shot in it, lands this nice little papillo, pan, perfect pan fry size. So then after that, looking in another hole, and I see this other Aveo Veo and land him. And I actually shot one more after this that I didn't get on camera because I don't know, my camera was giving me lots of problems on this dive. But yeah, I landed this avail veil and then one more after that. Yes. 
so. I didn't get on camera because um, my camera died and it was right at the end of the dive we were in maybe 40 feet water and I saw him from the top or sorry I went down on a blind drop with my three prong and I saw him with a Moana Kali and then um, I went back up because he wasn't coming in close and I grabbed my gun and then uh, he I went he was on the other side of this rock I dropped down on the opposite side of him and then he came around the rock through this uh, little gap between that rock and another rock and then came straight at me gave me a nice broadside shot and um, I stuck him so got this nice smaller kumu right here maybe a one and a half pounder and then got this bigger one that was out in the deep that you guys saw maybe a two and a half pounder two two and a half pounder and I got a few of veil and then this small kole right here but yeah we're gonna clean all these guys up and then get a nice catch and cook out of this big one right here so so I've shown this trick on a video before but I'm gonna show it again so when you're gutting a fish particularly predatory fish you know you, you do the whatever put the knife in the butthole and you know cut up to the to the mouth and then you cut these little things that connect the mouth to the uh the uh or sorry connect the uh, body to the mouth all right so now you want to get the gills out and the uh the the guts out so you can do it all in one quick kind of movement here so if you pull on the gills of a predatory fish you'll see this like webbing come out right here sorry my hands are all nasty but you'll see this webbing come out right here this part right here that connects the gill plate to this fleshy for the kumu, it has the tentacles on it, but this fleshy part right here. And so, you just have to cut through that. You just stick the knife in, and like kind of like you're cutting open their throat. And then now, as you can see here, I've got this opening underneath the bottom jaw here, right? And if you pull that, you know, put your thumb underneath their lower jaw, your other thumb inside that hole that you made. And you push down. Now I've torn the part of their gill plate and you can see their throat. And so you're just gonna put your finger, your thumb down their throat like that. You're gonna rip, 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 rip. Like that. And then, I don't know if I can show this on camera, but Right, let me rinse it out real fast. Okay, so now you can see that most, if not all, of his guts got pulled out in one kind of quick, quick movement there. So it's just a little bit of a faster way to uh, clean your predatory fish. And I'm just gonna clean this guy up a little bit more, clean up the inside, and we'll be good to go. beautiful kumu right here all scaled and gutted beautiful fish and so as most of you guys know kumu is a really good steam fish like most go fish most people usually steam it and that's exactly what I'm gonna do but usually us here in Hawaii we love our Chinese style steamed fish um, 
with the you know vegetables and the sausage stuffed in the cavity and then you steam it pour the hot peanut oil over and get a nice flash fry on all the veggies and stuff which is great i i'm you know one of those people i love that style of cooking steamed fish but unfortunately i don't have all of those ingredients on me right now and so i'm going to be steaming it a little bit of a different way than most people normally would with a fish like this um and it's in a way it's more simple and it's easier just because it doesn't require as many ingredients and it's really really good it's essentially you're just steaming the fish with salt and pepper nice and easy and then you're making a sauce that goes over the fish that's really delicious i've tried it many many times before just because i love it so much and like i said it's it's easier or more more readily available to me than um the classic traditional chinese style method which again is really good but i usually default to this because it's it's easier and more often i'll have all of the ingredients i need for this recipe than I would for Chinese style. Usually Chinese style I have to prepare ahead of time. I have to know that I'm gonna go in the water and shoot a steamed fish or a steamer fish and then you know have all the ingredients beforehand if I want to have it cooked by that night or whatever. So um, this was not the case. I did not know I was gonna shoot this beautiful kumu. Um, so I'm just gonna do this with the ingredients that I have and it's gonna hopefully it's gonna come out great. And I have done this recipe on my channel before but I'm gonna do it again because for those of you newer viewers who haven't gotten the chance to see that video or if you haven't you know scrolled all the way back on my channel to find that that one video where i did do this recipe then this will be new for you guys and for the people who have already seen it maybe you guys want to refresh on it um i'm gonna do that real quick right now so uh yeah let's get right into it all right guys so first things first here like you do you would do with most fish you're gonna i'm gonna cut some slits into it right here just along its body all the way down to the bone and usually I like to do three. I feel like that's what people normally do. Unless you have a you know a bigger fish, but three should be good for this kumu. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Perfect, so now we've got these slits on this side of the fish here. And that's gonna help the fish cook more evenly and faster because the heat can actually get into the center of the fish. Like I said, very simple seasoning for this recipe. Got your garlic salt and your ground black pepper. I'm just gonna toss this on the fish and then put the fish in the steamer and get a nice even cook on this fish because we're not gonna go heavy on the seasoning because like I mentioned earlier, the main flavor for this dish, this recipe, is gonna come from the sauce, which is you know gonna pack all of its punch right in there and then I'm gonna lay that over the fish once the fish is already cooked. So I'm gonna put this uh, seasoning on, then put the fish in the steamer, and then um, we'll move on to the sauce while the, uh, the fish is cooking. So the garlic salt is all clumpy and dry, so I'm just gonna go with this uh, pink salt instead. All right, so now I'm just going to lay the fish inside this pan right here. And I have two of these things helping to keep it elevated above the water. And I didn't show it on camera, but I also put um, seasoning inside the slits that I cut. And then I'm just gonna cover that. And I'm preheating the oven right now to 450 degrees. And then once that's ready, I'm gonna stick this in the oven. All right guys, so the fish is about halfway done, so we're gonna go ahead and get started with our sauce. So I'm gonna put the burner on like low, medium low heat, and then I'm gonna go in with some soy sauce here. Healthy amount of soy sauce there. Just a little bit more, okay. And then we're gonna wait for that to start to heat up before we add our other ingredients in. So now the pan is starting to heat up a little bit. We're gonna add some butter. Next, we're gonna add in some garlic. I'm not good at mincing, so I'm gonna use this garlic press. Next, we're going 
gonna add the sesame oil and lastly just a little bit of brown sugar Alright guys, that is it for today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. Remember, if you like this video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. I had a bunch of people asking me for a catch and cook, and so I was happy to get that nice kumu and the perfect thing to, to catch and cook on camera. So beautiful fish, came out great, and I hope you guys enjoyed that recipe. And if you guys try it out yourselves, let me know how it goes. Uh, but yeah, super fun dive, got some action. And it was a short dive too, you know, I love the dives where it's just quick couple hours you go in and you're you know everything lines up and there's some nice fish around and you can get some good shots in and get out and you still got you know the rest of the day to do whatever you want take care of your fish and and cook them and whatever so great dive super fun great seeing race again um and yeah i hope you guys enjoy that but i don't know what i got planned so far i mean as far as i could tell for the foreseeable future the weather's going to be pretty nasty very windy very rainy uh, but we'll see what we can do and hopefully we can get another dive in soon. But until then, I'll see you guys in the next one. Shoots everybody.